according to Romans 10 verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The heard word of God meditated upon and put into practice engenders joy to the heart, thereby releasing your desired miracles. With an expectant and delightful heart, receive the anointed word of God from the throne of grace. By the word of the Lord, every one oppression of the devil shall be terminated upon your life. Get set for a journey into God's word that will enlighten you and give you an encounter to remember. And all who believe that shall be your experience, shout aloud, Amen. Shout aloud, Amen. Shout aloud, Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord, big, big, and please be seated. Praise God. From glory to glory. From glory to glory. Congratulate your neighbor on the right and the left. It's a new day for you. It's my rare privilege tonight of God and his great servants in this house to bring God's word to us in a second session in this wonderful prophetic one night with the king. Like never before, before crack of dawn, with the loudest amen, you are galloping to new levels of glory. Please declare with me the theme of the month, pro prayer and fasting for facilitates fulfillment of prophecy. One to go. Prayer and fasting facilitates fulfillment of prophecy. It will answer for you in the name of Jesus. Our running theme for tonight is understanding covenant steps to fulfillment of prophecy. And I'm taking part two of that message. Understanding covenant steps to fulfillment of prophecy. They are covenant steps because they can never go unfulfilled. Saying to us, brethren, from where our God's servant stopped, that prophecies do not come to pass on their own accord. Prophecies do not come to pass on their own accord. They must be driven to fulfillment. They must be fired to fulfillment. Paul said to Timothy, 1 Timothy 1.18, there's a charge. I commit unto you as a father to the son, as a father to a son, according to the prophecies. There's what you must do to see them prophecies fulfilled. According to the prophecies, there's what you must do to see prophecies fulfilled. There's always what you must do by reason of source of the prophecy is deep enough to carry through. The source of prophecy is heavy enough to carry through. If our prophecies are the deep thoughts of God that guarantees deep encounters in man's life. Psalm 42 verse 7 Psalm 42 verse 7, it said, the depth of God calling, delivering, the depth of encounters to you. Deep calleth unto thee. Deep encounters, deep releases from heaven. That guarantees the depth of encounters. For they cannot answer on their own. God's servant said, in closing, he said, there are things you must do. To see prophecies fulfilled this year. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. It shall not just be a song in your life. It shall be an answer in somebody's hand. Let that amen be like 2016. He said in Joshua 21 verse 45. Joshua 21 verse 45. 
He said, and there faileth not. Joshua 21, verse 20, verse 45. He said, there faileth not on any good thing which the Lord has spoken. If it will not fail, then it must be driven to fulfillment. All came to pass. All shall come to pass for you. In 1 Kings 17, verse 8 to 16, something happened. The woman was to just eat her meal and die. 1 Kings 17, and by verse 13, Elijah appeared there. 1 Kings 17, 13. He said, fear not. Just go and make for me first. And then you see what happened. Make for me first the meal. And Bible says, and she went, verse 15, and did according to the saying of Elijah. Verse 15, she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. She did it. And she saw, verse 16, the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the great cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which is spake by Elijah. It did not fail. It came to pass according to the word of the Lord. Friends, as we catch what we must do, before the end of this prayer and fasting, there shall be speedy fulfillment of prophecy for somebody. What must we do to see prophecies fulfilled? That means I'll be sharing on how to see prophecies fulfilled. How to see prophecies fulfilled. Deep teaching in the first session, of course, every one of us must try and get the tape of that message and hear it over and over again. Real teaching. How do we see prophecies fulfilled? Number one, brethren, you must inject your faith into it. Inject your faith into it. Tie your faith into the fulfillment of every word. Why? Faith is a booster for speedy fulfillment. Faith is a driver for speedy fulfillment. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. It says, for unto us the gospel was preached as well unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith. They needed faith to mix with it. To energize that word to fulfillment. Faith is a booster. Faith is a driver. Faith helps you to press through. The word came to Mary. The mother of Jesus. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 45. Luke 1, 45. She said, I believe. And blessed is she that believeth there shall be a performance of the things which were told her. Friends, everything that I've been told you, including the one they will tell you tonight, shall answer speedily in the name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 27, Apostle Paul showed us, when you tie your face, to a prophetic war, no devil can stop its performance. When you tie your faith to a prophetic war, no devil can stop performance. In fact, everything lines up with it. In Acts 27, they were in the midst of a shipwreck. Verse 23 to 25. And Paul recounted, Acts 27, 23 to 25, he recounted his experience. He said, I, there's an angel that stood before me, whom I serve, whose I am. And said to me, that if we are faced with a shipwreck, uh, but there shall be no loss. Fear not. He said, the Lord has given you all that say with you. Verse 25. Verse 25. He said, and there shall be no loss. I believe God. It shall be unto me what he has said. Once you believe God, you provoke heaven to answer to you. I believe God. And friends, because he believed, Verse 30 to 31, verse 30 and 31, every one of them was preserved out of that shipwreck. Because he believed. Yes, the ship gave way, but the word answered. Tonight, every word said concerning you, no devil shall stop it in the name of Jesus. Number two, put your faith on line number one. Two, expect to see the word fulfilled. Expect it. We are told, Expectation is the mother of manifestation. 
Expectation is what gives birth, makes real every pregnancy. A baby can be born as soon as Zion traveled, the expectation was given birth to. Isaiah 66, verse 7 and 8. The expectant is always the accomplished. The expectant is always the accomplished. We are told, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. Hebrews 11, 1 to 3. It said, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Things expected. Things you are looking out for. Look out for it. If God said it, forget what is happening. Hold on to what is written. Expect to see what is written become what is happening. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtained a good report. But through faith we understand that the word of God framed our world. That word can frame your world. That word can rebrand your destiny. Expect to see it answer for you. Tonight, somebody's expectation is coming alive. You may not look like it, but brethren, expectation makes you see it coming in your direction. See it coming in your direction. See it looking like you gradually. You may not look like the giant that has been prophesied, but friends, because you expect, you start walking in that direction. Very soon, your smallness shall become bigness. A little one in this house this year shall become like a thousand. A small one shall become a strong nation. If you are there, let your amen be a row. In Proverbs 23 verse 18, Proverbs 23 verse 18, it says, For surely there is an end, and your expectation shall not be cut off. Proverbs 24 verse 14, your expectation is the one that shall not be cut off. Psalm 62 verse 5, let your expectation be God will fulfill what he had said. My expectation is of him. I'm expecting God as I'm pressing in prayers, pressing in fasting to make me to look like what he has said. Make what he has said become real in my life. Friends, it's dropping for you already. It's answering to you already. It's looking like you already. Because what you look at will become what you will look like. What you keep looking at, because what you look like, expecting it is coming. And as you are looking at it, looking at it, very soon you will look like it. Before Sunday morning, somebody will look like glory to glory. Let that amen be louder. Number three, what else? We must engage the power of the Holy Ghost. Engage the power of the Holy Ghost. Please be reminded the, the Holy Ghost is the force behind creation. It can create everything that ought to come to pass. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. The earth was without form. It was void. And then the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the earth. And then what God said became what was real. What God said came to pass. What God said, God saw. What God said, God saw. The Holy Ghost moved upon the face of the earth. The Holy Ghost is the force behind creation. Therefore, engage the power of the Holy Ghost. That as we look up to God, call on the Holy Spirit to make real what God has said. Know of the truth. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 34 and 35. Prophecy had gone for concerning the Messiah. It didn't look like it. It didn't look like it would happen. But verse 34, the angel said to me, Mary said, how shall this thing be? I don't know a man. Somebody is saying here, how shall this thing be? I don't even have a job. How shall this thing be? I don't even have somebody that has proposed to me. How shall this thing be? Look at the doctor's report. But verse 35, the Bible says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Lift your two hands 
Tonight, I declare concerning every word of prophecy, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. He said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. And the holy thing that has never been, been done in your family shall come alive with somebody here tonight. The loudest amen your package is the largest one. Yeah. Believe God. Engage your expectation. That you look up for the Holy Ghost to come upon you and begin to give birth one after the other. Give birth one after the other. Luke chapter 11 verse 13. Luke 11 verse 13. He said, for if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father to give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him. Give the Holy Ghost to answer to you. This word of the law, since Zerubbabel was told, it's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. By my spirit. So in every prophetic arena, the Holy Ghost is the one at work, making the word become flesh in the lives of men. The Holy Ghost on the move, making the world to become real in the lives of men. He's moving here tonight. Every holy thing due to you shall drop in your direction. Let me hear a sounding amen. amen. Number four. What else must I do? Engage in spiritual warfare. Prophecy has gone forth. Don't wait for it. 1 Timothy 1 16, war a good warfare. War a good warfare. Spiritual warfare is war in the spirits against all contenders of your destiny. War in the spirit against all contenders of your destiny. Every prophetic word that goes your way creates an acreage of influence for you, an acreage of fulfillment for you. An open check has been given to you. But you need to battle your way to take it. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. Deuteronomy 2 24. He said, I've given you an open check. But begin to possess it. Contend with them in battle. Contest for what belongs to you. There are many contenders. But the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty through God. Therefore, First Timothy Chapter 6, verse 12. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. You need to fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. To lay hold on eternal life. Fight the good fight of faith. To possess your good possession. Possess a good profession. Every good thing that has come here, that has been declared concerning you, you need to rise up and fight for it. Otherwise, it will fail in your direction. Otherwise, it will fail concerning you. Rise up and battle for it. Battle in the spirit. Battle in prayers. Battle in fasting. Warring in the spirit is what enables you to be delivered from what wants to choke your destiny. Warring in the spirit delivers you from what wants to choke your destiny. Everything trying to choke what God has said. I curse it tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear your amen if you're there. He said, take what belongs to you. Wrestle with every contender. There are many things that are saying you can't have it. There are many weapons of the warfare that the enemy that will say you cannot have it. But God is saying, you, do, you are not just praying in the spirit, but you are praying deep enough to lay hold on whatever belongs to you. Jude chapter 1, verse 20 says, for example, Jude 1, 20. It says, pray in the spirit. Pray for what belongs to you. Pray with all manners of prayer in the Holy Ghost. And what is content with you will bow down one by one. Tonight, everything contending with your destiny is terminated now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number five. Number five, if it will not fail, then give yourself to all that it demands. Give yourself wholly to all the demands thereof. Give yourself wholly.
to all the demands thereof. Because know it, brethren, your sense of value will always determine the flow of virtue. Everything of value costs something. Everything of value costs great things. Every small car you want to buy, you put down small money, you get a small car. You put down great money, you get a great car. You put down small money, you get a small house. Put down great money, you get a great house. Bible says, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. It said, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. But he that sweat bountifully, something glorious is what you are going for. Place great demand and great things will answer to you. So when it's prayer time, you are praying, sowing bountifully. Fasting time, you are sowing bountifully. Pressing time, you are pressing bountifully. Prophesying time, you are prophesying bountifully. You are preaching bountifully. And because you are going great for great things, God will deliver great things into your hands this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. First Timothy chapter 4, verse, 6, verse 15. First Timothy 4, 15. It says, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly unto them. And your profiting shall appear unto all. When you give yourself wholly unto spiritual things, it entitles you to the whole of it. Say amen. When you give yourself wholly to spiritual things, you gather the whole of it, give thyself wholly unto it. Wholesomely. Totally. It becomes yours, Jesus said. In Matthew 17, 21, you want every kind to answer to you. Then couple prayers with fasting. Give yourself wholly to it. Meditate wholly. Pray wholly. Fast wholly. And the whole of your glory to glory package shall answer for you with spirit. Receive it tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I did hear your loudest amen if you're there. Wine finished. Everybody gave up. But the mother of Jesus stepped in. In John 2, verse 5. John 2, 5. It said, whatsoever it tells you to do. Don't just do it. Do all of it. Do the whole of it. People of God. This is the year you have been waiting for. Starting from this week. This new week. God will rebrand your destiny practically. Be ready to do all that it demands. Give him all you can take. Give it wholly to go the whole length. Take the whole step. Place the whole demand. In Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 8, Jesus needed to minister. At the take of Gennesaret, and in verse 2, the Bible said there were ships there, but that of Simon was the one that he took. Verse 3, he entered into one of the ships. It was Simon's own. And prayed him. And he taught from the ship. Simon gave him all. Gave him the whole of his boat. Gave him everything that was available to him. And Jesus ministered from that boat. And after a while, Jesus looked at him. You have given me the whole of what you have. You are entitled to the whole of the blessing. He said to him, launch into the deep for a catch. And Bible said, he let down his nets. And Simon answered and said, Master, we have toiled all night. We have caught nothing. But nevertheless, at your wall. And Bible says, as he cast his nets, not only did he have a catch, he had a net breaking catch. He had a boat sinking catch. He never needed to fish anymore. Lift your two hands. I declare this early morning, grace to go the whole length. So you can have the whole package this year. The Lord has amen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Give him all that you have this season. Don't withhold. And all that God has in store for you shall rush in your direction. Give him all that you have. Don't withhold. And all that God has in store for you shall come in your direction. Peter did not need to fish anymore. That was his last fishing experience. He became a fisher of, fisher of men. He became a transgenerational testimony. You have come through the first week. The second week is about closing. Give him holy. Go the whole length. 
press the whole desire and the whole of God will answer for you. Ah, now tonight I declare fresh strength will answer for you. Fresh grace will answer for you. In Micah chapter 3 verse 8. Micah chapter 3 verse 8. Micah spoke facing prophecy. He said, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. To declare what God has appointed, declare unto Jacob his tradition and Israel's sin. I'm full of power. I'm going the whole land, generating full power for full encounters. Generating full power for full experiences. Friends, there is full power available this season. As you press for the fullness of encounters, before you close this prayer and fasting, you'll be firing this year on all cylinders. Let that amen be a louder one if you're there. Number six. What else do I do to see promises fulfilled? Be at peace with God and with yourself in your pursuit for fulfillment. Be at peace with God and with yourself and with this world to see fulfilled. Be at peace. Brethren, when prophecy goes forth, if you desire fulfillment, then take your rest in God. Tell your neighbor, take your rest. Tell your neighbor, Lada, take, take your rest. Tell him, Lada, be at peace with God. When prophecy goes forth and you want to see fulfillment, then take your rest in God. Receive it with your heart and be ready to pursue God for fulfillment. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. He said, my son, just give attention to the words. Give ear to my saying. Let them not depart from your heart. Let them not keep them in the midst of your heart. Settle down with them, for they are life unto them that find them and hell to their flesh. Settle down with them. Attend to them, it will beautify your life. Attend to it, it will beautify your life. That means trouble not yourself. You are not the one to make the prophecy to answer for you. The one that spoke it will do it. Say a loud amen. The one that said it will do it. The louder amen. The one that appointed will do it. The loudest amen. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. Exodus 14, verse 14. It said, the Lord will fight for you. Hold your peace. Tell your neighbor for me louder, hold your peace. No matter how much you are anxious, no matter how much you shake, no matter what you run up and down, you can't make one word fulfill. Hold your peace, God will fight. Take your rest, God will show up. Settle down with God, God will press out for you. The Lord will fight for you. Hold your peace. Psalm 46 verse 10. Psalm 46 verse 10. He said, be still and know that I'm God. I shall be exalted among the heathen. I shall be exalted on the earth. Brethren, when you allow God to take over, you can never be disallowed of your entitlements. When you allow God to take over, you can never be disallowed of your entitlements. Allow God to take over, you will never be deprived of your entitlements. Allow God to run the show and you will end up a showpiece on the earth. Allow God to run the show this year. Father, I allow you to flow and I seek my rest in you. Work it out in me. Work it out through me. Work it out for me. That job you are looking for, you are prayed for it tonight. Take your rest in God. Before Monday morning, jobs shall be chasing after you. That marital issue, you are prayed about it. Settle down in God. Oh, in a short while from now, men will be knocking at your door asking for your hand in marriage. I did hear your amen if you're there. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17. It says, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself. Stand ye still and you will see the salvation of the Lord your God. When you stand still, then you will see God show up for you. When you stand still, you will see God show up for you. Just stand still. He said, be not dismayed. For tomorrow, God will show up for you. 
If that prophecy has gone forth, nothing can tell about the fulfillment. In Prophet stood, Second Kings chapter 7, 1 and 2, we have heard it. I said, by this time tomorrow, there will be abundance in Samaria. Nobody needed to move one thing to fulfill it. The one that spoke moved lepers. The one that spoke caused a rumbling in Samaria. The one that spoke I commanded the abundance. And abundance answered in Samaria. The Lord will fight. The Lord will gather. Take your rest in God. Lift your two hands, I declare. Everything making you to doubt is caused here tonight. Everything standing between you and speedy fulfillment is crushed here tonight. Number seven. What else must I do? Engage faith-filled thoughts regarding its fulfillment. Engage faith-filled thoughts regarding the fulfillment. Know it, brethren, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Your thinking pattern determines your life pattern. Your thinking pattern determines your life pattern. Your thinking pattern determines your ultimate portion. Start thinking glory to glory and shame will leave you alone finally. Start thinking change of levels. They will never find you on the ground anymore. Start thinking that there will be quantum leaps for you every quarter. As long as that is your thoughts. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. God will do for you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think. By his power that worketh in us. So God answers to us with the same dimension in prayers like in our thinking. You can't be thinking shame and wondering why you are not seeing glory. You can't be thinking failure and wondering why you are not seeing success. You can't be thinking poverty and wondering why you are not seeing prosperity. Put your hand up on your forehead. I declare tonight, every cobweb thinking, every grasshopper thinking, every backward thinking, be delivered in the name of Jesus. When you think like God from tonight, everything God has appointed to you, receive it in the name of Jesus. Know it. That when God speaks, He speaks according to His size, not according to your portion. He speaks according to His size, not according to your own, your own, your own capability. He speaks according to His ability, not according to your pocket. If He said it, He will do it. If he said it, heaven or not, we answer for you. If he said it, glory to glory, we answer for you. Tonight, I'm speaking to anyone that can believe what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what your generation has never imagined. Before the end of this fasting, it will land for you practically. James chapter 1, verse 7. James chapter 1, verse 7. He said, Let not that man think. That he can receive anything of the Lord. Why? Because he's thinking instability. He cannot receive. When you are unstable in your thoughts, you will be deprived of your entitlement. When you are unstable in your thoughts, you will be deprived of your entitlements. You will be deprived of your portion. Psalm 19, verse 4. It said, the line is gone out through all the earth and there was to the end of the world. It said in them, as he set the tabernacle for the sun. His words have gone forth. He has set a measure for you beyond what your eyes can see. Start thinking like God. You will soon have it as him. You will soon be like God. Start thinking and rest beyond your imagination. For as far as your eyes can see. Genesis chapter 11 verse 6. Genesis 11 verse 6. Say what they have imagined. God must do it for them. What they have seen. What they are thinking, no devil can stop it. Somebody tonight, there's a complete overhauling of your thinking. Because your thinking is changing from this night, your package shall arrive for you speedily. I'm not hearing your amen. 
I'm not hearing your louder. Amen. Number eight. What else must I do? Engage faith filled words. Engage faith filled words by speaking the reality of fulfillment bodily. By speaking the reality of fulfillment bodily. Speaking with confidence. Speaking with confidence. I'd like you to know that confidence is the conqueror's backbone. Confidence in warfare is the conqueror's backbone. The lion has no other energy but his confidence. Proverbs 30, 30. It's the strongest among all beasts. He turned it not away for any. He manifests confidence. He demonstrates confidence. And every doesn't turn for any. When you generate confidence, you don't turn for any. And everything turns for you. Everything runs for you. Proverbs 28 verse 1. The righteous is as bold as a lion. God is saying, to see promises fulfilled, start speaking boldly. Stop speaking confidently. Acts 14 verse 3. Stop speaking boldly. Things will begin to line up for you. Acts 14 verse 3. Acts 14 verse 3. It's a long time they are both there. Speaking boldly. The Lord, in the Lord, he gave testimony to the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Every time. You see a mountain standing before you, don't turn. Speak against that mountain. Speak boldly. Speak boldly. If God said it, no devil can stop it. It was said that you are going to be a joyful mother of children. And a lady got pregnant. She went to have a checkup. They looked at her and said, no, you don't have a baby. You have fry boy. She said, never. The word of prophecy has gone forth. And she kept anointing that baby and speaking boldly. It's not fibroid that is here, it's a fine boy. It's not fibroid that is here, it's a fine boy. It's not fibroid that is here, it's a fine boy. And when the baby came out, the baby came out as a fine boy with oil on his head to give a slap to the devil. Every negative verdict over your destiny, I return it to the sender right now. Mark 11. Mark 11. 23 and 24, when they say mountain, speak to this mountain. Be thou removed and be thou far beyond the sea. He said that we shall come to pass. You will have whatsoever you say. You will have whatsoever you say. You have whatsoever you say. Many, many years ago, in the old church in Rajoba, in Lagos, a young man went and had a medical test. Incidentally, he got a medical report. He had HIV. As he said, no. He carried, the, he carried the report, rushed to the church, met God's servants in the office, in the, in the tower at the base, in the office, and went to him and carried the boy. He said, I do have HIV. I do have HIV. I do have HIV. I do have HIV. Shouting. And God's servant collected the boy from his squeeze and said, You don't have HIV. Go back to have HIV. He went back for the test. HIV died. I don't have a HIV. I don't have a HIV. Whatever you don't want to see, don't watch it. Speak against it. Speak what you want to see. He said, I've given you a mouth and a wisdom. Luke chapter 21 verse 15. Luke 21 verse 15. I've given you a mouth and a wisdom. Which none of your adversaries shall be able to withhold or against say. Open your mouth wide and engage your voice. If you believe it, faith must speak it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I believe it. Therefore have I spoken it. If you believe it, now speak it. In a short while, we're going to have the opportunity to release your faith and speak it. Speak against the devils. Speak against the closed doors. Speak against the recurring evil. Whatever you declare tonight, before crack of dawn, there shall be manifestation for you. Let your amen be the loudest one. Number nine, what else must you do? Rejoice in the Lord always. No matter what things you look like 
in the process. Rejoice in the Lord always. No matter what things you look like in the process. No matter what you are looking like now, just keep on rejoicing. Just keep on celebrating. Your way unto him. Your way unto performance. Rejoice in your way. Dance in your way. If God has said it, then dance in expectation. Roll with your desire. Be not ashamed. Be not frustrated. You have prayed. You believe. Now start rejoicing. You will soon be like it. Can I hear your amen? amen? Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3. He said because it is with joy that you will withdraw what are the words of Israel. It's with joy. God wants to see your joy. God wants to see your rejoicing. As you dance your way, I declare tonight, within this next seven days, your greatest baggage will arrive for you from heaven. In Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, Habakkuk 3, verse 17 to 19, he said, although the fig tree does not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vine, the labor of the olive looks like it's failing, the field looks like it's eating no fruits. He says, verse 18, he said, yet I will rejoice. Come on, shout yet. Say louder, yet. The loudest you can say, yet. If you say yet, I will rejoice. The Lord I can, yet I will rejoice. He said, the Lord shall be thy strength. He make like feet like high sweet, and he cause you to ride upon your high places. Lift your two hands, I declare. Every depression in your life is caused from the roots. Every oppression in your life is caused from the roots. Receive a baptism of the spirit of joy. I did hear your Lord as him. Somebody ready for me to prophecy, jump on your feet and shout the Lord as him. Whatever God has said concerning you, I declare from tonight as you pray, there shall be speedy manifestation for you in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voices to him. I begin to speak to God. Father, your word has gone in my direction. Not one of them shall fail. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, not one of your word in my direction shall fail. Lift your voices to him. Lift your voices to him. Man Tobara, Leria Bakosanaya, lift your voices. It must not fail. It must answer to me. Lift your voices to him. And begin to war a good warfare. Lift your voices to him. And begin to war a good warfare. And Tomara, Lekosate Kataba. And Tomara, lift your voices to him. And begin to wrestle your way. I Tobala no Sesala. Verobo Shaba. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In John chapter 17, verse 1, Jesus prayed. He lifted up his voice to heaven and said, Father, glorify your son. Father, he lifted up his voice and said, The hour has come to glorify your son. Let thy, thy, thy son be glorified in thee. Before crack of dawn, your glory to glory packet will arrive in multiplied dimensions. Yeah. Lift up your two hands and begin to cry to God, Father, my hour of glory has come. Let it answer to me. Lift your voices to him. 